Abrams tank destroyed in Ukraine conflict. One of Ukraine's US supplied M1 Abrams tanks looks to have sustained significant damage and appears to be the first loss of one of these prized tanks in combat in the country. Evidence that Ukrainian Abrams tanks had finally entered the fight only recently began to emerge. This also comes amid concerns about the ability of Ukraine's armed forces to sustain these tanks in the long term. So, Moscow's troops have destroyed the first US-made M1 Abrams main battle tank supplied to Kiev's forces amid the Ukraine conflict, multiple Russian telegram channels reported. Footage circulating online purports to show the vehicle with a large column of fire rising from its turret. It was reportedly targeted by an FPV suicide drone and sustained at least one hit from a shoulder-mounted anti-tank grenade launcher. The tank was reportedly hit near the village of Berdichi, located to the northwest of Avdiivka, a key Donbass town recently liberated by Russian forces. A close-up of the destroyed Abrams, taken by a surveillance drone, shows the vehicle's ammunition compartment burned out with the engine compartment on fire. Washington pledged to supply Ukraine with 31 M1 Abrams tanks in January 2022, ahead of Kiev's long-hyped yet ultimately botched counter-offensive. However, they were fully delivered only by mid-October and have seemingly been kept away from the front line, being featured only in propaganda videos. The Ukrainian Abrams have seen actual combat only over the past few days, ending up deployed to the battlefield to bolster Kiev's effort to stop the westward advance of Russian troops following the fall of Avdiivka, formerly a major Ukrainian stronghold in Donbass and one of the key staging points for indiscriminate artillery and rocket attacks on the city of Donetsk. What may have been used to attack the tank, what happened to its crew, and whether Ukrainian forces were in a position to recover it or if the Russians may have now captured it are all unknown. Medvedev threatens Berlin, London and Washington with nuclear retaliation. Dmitry Medvedev, deputy chairman of the Russian Federation's Security Council, has threatened the United States and Europe with nuclear war if Russia is returned to its recognized borders from 1991. He said this on his Telegram channel. Medvedev wondered what would happen if Russia lost the war against neo-Nazis along with their Western sponsors and returned to its 1991 borders. He speaks to this outcome as the irreversible collapse of present-day Russia, which under the constitution includes new territories. Medvedev believes that after that, a civil war with tens of millions of victims and the death of the future of Russia will begin. And now for the main question, do these idiots truly believe that the Russian people will simply swallow such a consequential partitioning of their country that we will all think, unfortunately, it happened? They won. Russia as we know it today no longer exists. It is unfortunate, of course, but we must continue to live in a country that is collapsing and dying because a nuclear war is far worse for us than the death of our loved ones. Children? Russia? And that's the state's leadership led by the Supreme Commander-in-Chief of the Russian Armed Forces, would be hesitant to make difficult decisions in this case? Hear me out, it will be totally different. The collapse of Russia will have far worse consequences than the outcome of a conventional, even long-term war. Because attempting to return Russia to its 1991 borders will only lead to one outcome. To a global war with Western countries, utilizing our entire strategic arsenal. In Kyiv, Berlin, London and Washington for all other beautiful historical sites which have long been included in our nuclear triads attack goals. Will we have enough guts for this if a thousand-year-old country, our great homeland, is on the verge of extinction and the sacrifices made by the Russian people over the centuries are in vain? The answer is obvious, Medvedev added. Ukrainian intelligence announces new surprises in Crimea. Civilians should not use the Crimean bridge. New surprises await the enemy, states Kirillo Budinov, head of the Defense Intelligence of Ukraine. According to Budinov, we owe the successes of Ukrainian soldiers in Crimea to the inhabitants of the peninsula whose resistance to the enemy has not ceased over the past 10 years of war with Russia. The Defense Intelligence Chief explained that for successful defense and counter-offensive, Ukraine must control the Black Sea and Crimea. 
all previously set tasks have been accomplished. Russia lost a quarter of its ships and was forced to withdraw its fleet to the Caucasus coast. The enemy has also redeployed its aviation as Crimean airfields and military facilities are constantly under our fire. We owe our success to the residents of Ukrainian Crimea, who not only strengthened their resistance to the occupiers, but also found the opportunity to monitor the entire operational situation on the peninsula and pass this information to us as soon as possible, Budinov added. Ukraine has also fulfilled another promise. In 2023, our special forces officers visited Crimea. New surprises await the enemies, and I would not recommend civilians to use the so-called Crimean Bridge, the head of Ukrainian intelligence said. The Crimean Bridge, illegally built by the occupiers, has been hit at least twice. In October 2022, powerful explosions occurred on the bridge, causing significant damage. The head of the security service of Ukraine, Vasil Maliuk, confirmed that it was an operation of his special service. In addition, in July 2023, there was another attack on the Crimean bridge. Two spans were destroyed. Maliuk also confirmed Ukraine's involvement in this attack and noted that it was organized with the help of Sea Baby drones.